Okay, once again, electron flood theory completely shows that this is quite simple to understand. This lightning is going upwards because the Earth is overcharged. These are electrons that are getting being pushed away instead of sucked to Earth. Now, they can see them erupting from the cloud layer into the ionosphere and out into space because they have, they can't be absorbed anymore. We just got too many electrons here. We're too overheated. Electrons are heat. It's not understood. It says the gigantic jet moved an estimated 300 coulombs of electrical charge. Well, what is a coulomb? It it, it is 6.24 quintillion electrons. So just think, think of a gigantic bucket of electrons going up in space. And they emitted from the thunderstorm into the ionosphere, which is the lower edge of space. So you got space out here, then you got the ionosphere. And the only reason the ionosphere is there because there's a scrub of space. All right, once again, electron flood theory explains this perfectly. They say we were able to map the gigantic jet in three dimensions. They can see it perfectly. Now, they were able to see very high frequency. What is frequency? Frequency is bouncing back and forth. It's a shake. Very high frequency is They were able to see this very high frequency source above the cloud top. Why? What's, what's making that shake like that? It had not been seen before with this level of detail. Using satellites and radar data, we were able to learn where the very hot leader portion of the discharge was located above the cloud. The leader portion is the extremely high frequency, creating extreme amounts of electrons. And I think I mentioned that um, one coulomb is 6.24 times 10 to the minus or 10 to the 18th power. It's like, uh, I think it's 6.24 tri quintillion. Now, these are 300 times. That, they were, I, I, uh, this 300, um, 300 coulombs. All right, so that's almost 2,000 quintillion. And the normal is, I think, five, they said here. I think I said five is the normal coming down towards the earth. And this was 300, so that's a big, big difference. Anyway, it's, it, it, that's what it is, trust me. It's in some other article. I've been following this very, very closely, and I fully understand what's going on. It is just an overcharge of electrons in this specific region of space that is the scrub zone too many electrons and then once you get so many electrons they're pushing and shoving so hard each other they get a high very high frequency and then it gets worse and then they take off into space all right here's the here's the event occurring they create these little tubes coming up which are excessive amounts of electrons gathered Due to the fact that everything is spinning and scrubbing and getting hotter and denser and more condensed and you'll create these little, like they're almost tornadoes of electrons. Now they get, because of all the spinning atmospheric interference and water particles and all that stuff that's in the air, that's when you see these thunderstorms, that's what's going on. Now, what happens is this is pushing electrons against each other so not only do they push down they push up when they push up they are pushing against what's coming down to them which is what normally comes down and we scrub against so not only are they pushing down to normal we're pushing back up again and it creates an extreme reaction right here and and then you get this extreme vibration and then you get the the frequency Electrons are just too much there, and they go flying off into space. They have to find a place to go to, and Earth will not accept them at this point. All right, they go on to say it's, they don't know anything really about it now. Uh, little is known about the phenomenon. It's unpredictable. It occurs where most people can't see it. But thanks to a citizen scientist, one of such a giant jet was recorded above the clouds in 2018. So they st it's just starting to take a look at it. 
and uh, we were able to see very high frequency. That's the key. Very high frequency. What shakes it so much? Why would it just shake all of a sudden out there all by itself? And this was the one I think they talked about. Uh, yeah, here it is right here. These jets upward do 300 coulombs. Now don't forget, now a coulomb is 6 uh, 6.24 quintillion electrons. That's a pretty good sized number. Now, normally it's 5 coming down to Earth. But this is 300. Now, why would you get so many concentrated electrons in one? Because that's a concentration. 300 is a concentration compared to 5. I mean, duh. Plus, they're going backwards. They're not coming down. All right, a whole different story. They are pushing away instead of getting sucked down. And the gr ground is a sucker. It sucks electrons. You grab a hold of a, of a electrical outlet, and if that outlet is grounded, it won't hurt you because it will go to the easiest thing, which is ground. If it's not grounded, it goes through you and you die. All right, so you, you just have to understand how particles move, and then you have to understand these are the particles. They're not one big gigantic proton and little tiny negative electrons. They are huge quantities of electrons, which are nothing more than a dark and a white. An electron is one of each of these that's glued together. A little tiny bar magnet. You put two of them together, it's light. It bounces off of you. You put a chunk of them together like that, it's a proton. You can put balls and balls of them together like that, it's matter, it's molecules, it's chemistry, it's acids, it's salts, it's it's construction material for your body. It's, it's everything. But they're all made out of these two particles. That's the key. All right. The reason they don't understand what's going on is they don't understand the nature of the particles that we call protons. All right. They're not one big gigantic chunk like that. And you can smash them and break it into pieces. No, they're one chunk like this, which is stable at a certain number of particles. And then when you smash them apart, all of these particles fall apart. Sometimes they fall apart one little piece at a time, like here. Sometimes they fall apart like this. So they call it a particle zoo because they see them all in these small little packages. But this is a photon. But half of that, like this, just the white and the black, is an electron. All right, photons bounce. Electrons go zzzz, and that's why we're seeing a whole extra collection of electrons. All right, they're not in a photon mode. They're in a ball nature. It's, it's totally different than, um, than light. It's a separation of those two particles. And I have seen this happen on the Russian mission in space. I've seen them separate. Okay, everybody talks about black hole, black hole. Well, this is what they think of about a black hole. But I can tell you what, this area right here is being concussed. There's pushing and shoving. Because anytime you see a glow, there's pushing and shoving. This is a dipole. Now, what, what does that mean? I'm not sure. <laughs> but here's what, um, this is another type of black hole where they show there's just a hole there of blackness and then all of these particles floating around it. Well, guess what? That does happen. I agree with that because I've seen it. I followed this very carefully, and there it is right there. All right, and here's what they say. Here's what happened. The Russians went out into space. They took a vacuum chamber, which means they can suck everything out of it. And then they put it in outer space, which is, is um, zero gravity. So there's no real pulling down of all these particles, because these particles want to get pulled to gravity. All right? This is gravity. So they're getting pulled into gravity, which is a black hole. This is nothing more than a black hole in space. They put in charged particles into this vacuum chamber, and here's what occurred. And they flipped out. They went absolutely freaking crazy, and of course they did. It says, during the experiment, we contacted the Earth guys who couldn't believe it either. Apparently, there was a guy from Max Planck who freaked out so bad he locked himself in his office for three weeks. <laughs> what they had expected to find was all of these white particles pushing each other apart 
in totally around it. All right, so it, it, one would come and push another one away like this. All right, so they would be like this everywhere. So there would be a lattices of them. And the particle would be right in the center of each one of these lattices. That's what they expected. And then I saw this and I said, holy smokes. I understand this because this is electron flood theory. Although I did not understand that they can just so simply divide like this. But you have to be outside of a gravitational influence in order for this to happen. But I, you could see it. There was no question it happened. You should see the rest of the experiments they did. Absolutely stunning. Okay, I'm not going to get too deep in this. I think I mentioned I'm writing a book now about everything that's wrong in science, and that's everything. And this is the push to scrub right here. Now, that is our particles of our atmosphere that are running around with our planet spinning and going around the, the sun and being sucked through the Milky Way. It's just amazing how much interaction there is between our outward layer of gases and the, the gases that fill the universe, and they fill them. They are nothing more than light particles and um, the photons and electrons and plasma and dust particles. They're everywhere. This is the scrub. It's 2,700 degrees where it scrubs, and then it gets down to like minus 80 or something. Why would it do? It's just that layer. Now, all of a sudden, we're getting coming from down underneath. We're spitting up electrons. They're spitting down electrons and there could we could be hitting a dense area we're really hitting us hard and this is hitting us hard at the same time and you get all that 300 coulombs of juice just in a ball pew, takes right off and says well just go back where you came from get the hell out of here and they go and they're red sprites and blue sprites and then there's elves too studied them for years since they discovered them and is and they're getting more and more frequent as we scrub harder and harder because we are expanding the gaseous layer here, it's either expanding or it's condensing, so it's harder. So when we turn, it scrubs harder and harder and harder. We get more and more tornadoes and hurricanes and compression where we have huge floods where the air is being compressed into the oxygen, hydrogen, turn it into water, where we hit land masses and so forth, com compressing the atmosphere. It's It's all very, very obvious once you understand electron flood theory. And until you do, They'll never understand a single thing about this kind of stuff. Nothing. Totally lost now they are. All right, using the Warren effect, we created basically the same thing. We created this extreme, very high frequency oscillations, spitting it through the Venturi, and we ended up creating these streamers. Listen to what it says. The VHF and optical signals def definite definitively confirmed what researchers had suspected but not yet proven. The very high frequency radio from lightning is emitted by small structures called streamers. These are those little, I'll show them to you, that are at the very tip of the developing lightning while the strongest electric current flows significantly behind this tip in an electrically conducting channel called a leader. Let me show you what he's talking about. Okay, this is basically identical to what is happening with these red and blue sprites. This, this is line right here is basically the line of the Venturi. We shot light through that and make the, made it force extreme vibrations, very high frequency. And the white light was able to come through here. The black particles cannot get through. So what happens here? These are those white leader tips that they're talking about going off into space. Too much frequency, too much rub, too much scrub, too much action, and bouncing back and forth. Very high frequencies here, and then they take off. Now, why do we see these little streamers? Because of there's so much energy that they're still shaking. They push this guy, that guy pushes this guy. They push them back and forth. It's called I call it push to shove. Push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. And at the same time, if you can see, these black balls are reintegrating with the white, turning back into just basically the light. And I was just watching something, how they're explaining Cheryankov radiation. This is Cheryankov right here. What they talk about is light coming in at 
above the speed of light, or they say, well, you know, they really can't say that, so they say, or somewhere in that area. Well, it is above the speed of light because we accelerated it. When it goes through this dense water, it's nothing more than a new medium. And it creates Cheryenkov radiation from a muon produced by a muon neutrino event. So the muon neutrino is attached to an electron neutrino. When they come crashing through here at extremely high speed, normally not that high, they, this, this is radioactive emissions, they interact with this heavy water and they can see these separations electron showers, big white showers, and a black ball just continues, which is the muon. So here's what it says. Cheryenkov radiation from a muon produced by a muon neutrino event. So that is a muon. So remember that name, muon. It yields a well-defined circular ring in the photomultiplier detector bank. That's how they see them in their detector bank. We see them through CMOS and it works very well. The Cheryenkov radiation from the electron shower produced by the electron neutrino event produces multiple cones and therefore a diffuse ring in the detector array. So they've got their array face here and they're seeing these two particles and they're saying, wow, well, look at there. But they're just smashing from everywhere. They don't see them manifesting themselves and then glowing attached to each other and then separating. We do. We actually see them coming and turning into a black and white package and then separating here, which is fission, and then reattaching over here, which is fusion. And in between here is those white streamers they're talking about. Now don't forget, the things I'm talking about are well known. That's the fixed particle, and that is the gooey little white particle I show you. This is Fermilab, Don Lincoln, he's a director down there. And he's asking about, and do I have any questions? Well, I did, and they went unanswered. Now, his summary was the extended particle, which is the black one, is a fixed size. Totally agree. They have a fuzzy edge. Totally agree. Point-like particles are mathematical extractions with zero size, possibly. Even zero size particles have extended field effects due to their field surrounding them. Yes, absolutely I agree. No, so that's those two particles I showed you. Those that's Don Lincoln. This is Cornell. They also found these neutrino nucleus, quasi-elastic, two particles, two holes, they called them, which is the blacks and the whites, two whites and two blacks. And then they created excess energy when you got to a certain input energy. Now this shows they were measuring smartphones. Smartphones are used to, res to, to look at these cosmic ray mu muons. Co muons are muons. I don't care if they're cosmic rays. We made them by crushing the fields with the Warren effect. So this is not something this is new. This is understood quite well and, and they, they just can't deal with this because they're using head-on protons, gigantic particles, smash, like these the thousands literally at a time hitting head-on and then they just get splashes of everything, have no idea where it came from. And all they can do is look for the smallest particles. We found them back when they found them, which is the same ones that Don Lincoln found. The big black one and the little squishy red one. Nothing is hidden here. All right, I've been reporting on this since 2015 was when I started learning about these sprites and how they reacted. And you see there's a push up and a push down. That can happen. That's, that's one type. And um, that's another way of looking at it. You see how it's lighting up the cloud there. It's not emanating from the cloud. It's, this is the interface right at the top here. They say, oh, it gets pushed up from the cloud. No, it's not. It's pushing down towards the cloud, interacting with the gases in the air, glowing it. But it's also interacting out into space where there is not as many particles as to glow with as there is moisture in the air. So you don't see them quite, you see them a little differently. Now this is probably the same picture again, no, a different one. This is uh, from July 94, is one of the first pictures they ever saw of this. and. This is just an excess amount of electrons in this area 
just trying to get the hell out. And when it concusses with the ionosphere, basically, is where you get this red shift because it's trying to push back against it. So it starts out basically blue and really glowy. And then when it hits to push back, that's when you, when you create less energy, which is less frequency, which is red. Now what else do we have? These are blue sprites. You see, that is an intense amount of energy. There's just way too much electricity here. And they shoot out into space. I hope that makes sense. And that, it's just the scrub. It's the scrub of particles against other particles. It's this scrub zone right here that creates that. And this is the tip of that scrub zone and it's going to get the hell out of there the best way it can and zip there it goes all right somebody sent me this chris holmes there's a picture somebody sent me that's awesome looking in it <laughs> apocalyptic um thank you chris what do we got here all right these are like a bazillion of them at one time Now, this tends to make me think that there is impacts of areas like it's not just one impact coming down against some coming up. These are the impactors are having a very strong effect on these. You know, why would that just start right there? I can see this one. There's just a ton of extra electrons in here. And boom, it's shooting up. And it should just keep going. Well, wh why are these? These are like extra filaments. Now, are they coming down to smash to, to make this squirt out? I don't know. But it is an interaction be the between the down and the up. The down cannot accept anymore. It can't accept anymore. So that when they try to get out, they're banging into another layer up here, which is also wants to push down. So you've got a double banger. That's why it glows up here so intensely. It's pushing and shoving and it's pushing and shoving back again. This is uh, it's from the ISS and they're showing this extreme glow right here and the particles up above hard to explain that one I don't know some of these you know they just keep boggling your mind this shows basically where the particles are and anytime you see white or glow of any color it's energy it's impact something is impacting it all right here's another one coming down going up whatever this is a push to shove so this region here is also dense with electrons these are trying to get out so they're pushing these are shoving back and this is the interface between the push and the shove look at that <laughs> explain that one senior this I was starting to think that these were sinkholes and when they collapse they're just absolutely gigantic, absolutely enormous. And when they collapse now, because they're empty, except filled with gases that keep them supported. However, that gas is methane. And when that methane compresses, if that thing fell down, you would get a, a blast of just exactly like that. That would be like a catastrophic sinkhole collapse. Now look at this. I see this and I say to myself, why would this happen? Look at that. It's a water spout. And it's shooting one of those things up. Well, a water spout is going to pull up water away from the compression of that layer. And maybe it popped the layer and let it slam down. Because when they compress, it has to give off all these electrons. And methane is extremely dense with electrons. And there they go. That's the only reason I can think of for this event. And the same thing here. It's the only reason you... Well, how did that happen? Explain that to me. Somebody explain that. That's what I do. I like to explain things. I don't like to just look at it and say, ooh, isn't that nice? Ooh, and then just go, and I can't do it. It doesn't work for me. My mind just locked on this, and I say, 
Roger, you got to explain this, or you just can't continue on with life. Don't take another breath until you continue on. I, it's just the way I do things. You explain it to me. If you're a scientist, you're a physicist, you understand energy, you understand light, you understand the globe, you understand the energetic reactions. Why? All right, this is not hard to understand. These are the particles, and they all make up everything from these two individual opposites, which are normally glued together. They call them gluons. They're really electrons. Two electrons back to back make a photon. Photons bounce off of you. Light, if it's just one of each, that's lightning, static, electricity, heat. It's, it's an individual particle that is trying to muscle its way in to something. That's why it creates heat. It's trying to muscle its way in. It's pushing and shoving others. Right? We can force them to separate. And I showed you they will separate almost by themselves in space in the right conditions. Now, this is the whole new model. That's it. We don't need all this fancy stuff. If we can use this, and, we, and I think we can, these are the black particles that are the pushers and the shovers and the carriers of the white ones. We never saw those. They break, do this. You get that white shower, those white streamers here. This is where your energy is. They said 6.4 quintillion electrons in one coulomb. I don't know how many we're getting out of here, but I can tell you what. The energy that's coming out of here is staggering. We should be able to get free energy, and within a month, because this stuff is right off the shelf. All we need to do is harvest it.